Welcome back to RU Connected Learning. Last time, the idea of relevant and irrelevant cash flows for calculating NPV came up. This video will elaborate on that and talk about how to solve more complex, realistic NPV problems. Our analysis focuses on the difference between the firm's future cash flows as they would be with and without accepting the project. The difference between these two sets of cash flows is called the incremental cash flows. We can look at these incremental cash flows in isolation to understand whether or not a particular project is a good idea. If we were to accept a project, any changes to the firm's future cash flows as a direct result of doing so would be relevant. In other words, we'd ignore changes to the firm's cash flow that would have happened anyways. However, Separating relevant cash flows from irrelevant cash flows can sometimes be tricky. To help simplify the analysis, we can categorize certain types of cash flows we might be presented with in the problem and apply the same decision rule to anything that falls in that category. The first category is sunk costs, which are not included in the project's incremental cash flows. This is any cost that the business has already paid and can't remove. For example, if a business has a property it bought two years ago at $1 million and is thinking of converting it into a mall today, the cost of the property from two years ago wouldn't factor into the incremental cash flows of the mall conversion. That's a sunk cost. It would be more appropriate to include the opportunity cost of converting the property into a mall. An opportunity cost isn't really an expense, but the value of the next best alternative use for an asset that we'd be giving up by using it for something else. Going back to the mall example, Suppose the next best alternative is selling the property. Thus, the opportunity of converting the property into a mall is the current market value of that property, because obviously if we're converting it into a mall, we can't sell the land at the same time. We could only do one or the other. Other costs that might be relevant are inflation costs, as ignoring them might bias the NPV analysis toward accepting a project, and erosion, which is any reduction in your company's sales that is a direct consequence of accepting a project. For example, an electronics company introduces a mid-priced TV into their product mix and sees a drop in sales for their already existing low-priced and premium TV lines because people who would have bought either of those two are buying the mid-priced one instead. That would be an erosion cost. We'll do two quick problems to explore these. Beaver Brewing Co. is evaluating setting up a new brew house in Kitchener, Ontario to produce beer. The company already bought a plot of land in the area five years ago for $4.3 million for another project which was eventually abandoned. If the land were sold today, the company would get $5 million. Alternatively, if the company uses the land to set up its new brew house, the plant will cost $12 million to build and the site requires $600,000 worth of grading before it's suitable for construction. What is the proper cash flow amount to use as the initial investment in fixed assets when evaluating the project and why? So we're given $4.3 million as the cost of the land from five years ago, but that is a sunk cost and therefore it's irrelevant. Uh, the next piece of information we get is $5 million, which is the market value today, which means it's the opportunity cost because obviously we can't sell the land and develop it at the same time. We can only do one or the other. So if we choose to develop it, we're foregoing this $5 million income right now. So that would mean that this is relevant. The next pieces of information we're given are the $12 million and $0.6 million or $600,000 uh, required to get the project off the ground. So these would obviously be relevant because without these expenditures, we can't actually uh, build the brew house. So that said, these three uh, values, 5 million plus 0.6 million plus 12 million need to be added together for a total of $17.6 million, which will be our initial cash flow for year zero. Sungsam Corp currently sells 30,000 starter phones per year at $200 each and 12,000 high-end smartphones at $950 each. The company wants to introduce a new product line of mid-level phones. It hopes to sell 19,000 of these phones per year at $500 each. An independent consultant has determined that if SongSam introduces the new phones, it should boost the sales of its existing starter phones by 4,500 units per year and reduce the sales of its high-end smartphones by 900 units per year. What is the amount to use as the annual sales figure when evaluating this project and why? Thinking logically, if you wanted to get the sales figure for anything, 
all we would have to do is find out the amount sold, so the units sold, and multiply that by the price per unit, and then we would get the total value. However, in this case, we have to keep in mind that we're not just calculating that, but also the effect on the other product lines. So we would have to add in the effect on the starter phone. So we're just going to label that as L, uh, the starter phone line, where uh, we actually increased our sales, and the uh, smartphone line, where we actually decreased our sales. So we're going to label that U for upper line. And times the price for the upper line. So we actually sell 19,000 of the product line that we're focusing on at a price of $500. And we sell 4,500 more starter phones at a price of $200. And we actually lose on 900 units of sales in the smartphone category uh, for $950 each and multiplying those out and adding them up, we should get $9,545,000 in total sales. Without getting too bogged down in conceptual talk, of which there is a considerable amount in relation to this material, let's proceed to solving for NPV by examining the formulaic approach and doing some problems. The formula for NPV is as follows. I is the initial outlay of the project. PVOCF is the present value of the operating cash flows. PVC CATS is the present value of the capital cost allowance tax shield. PV Delta NWC stands for the present value of the change in networking capital. And PVNCS stands for the present value of net capital salvage. Each of these break down further, except I, which is either given directly or we will be given a bunch of extra information and be expected to sort out relevant and irrelevant costs, like we did in the previous two problems. Let's discuss PVOCF first. Note that the formula is just the present value of multiple cash flows formula, C times PVIFA, where C has been replaced by S minus C times 1 minus T sub C, where S is for sales, C is for costs, and T sub C is the tax rate. Sometimes we might be given a figure that represents S minus C already, and at other times we'll have to find S minus C after being given information similar to the first two problems in the video. Since we've already done those, the next few problems will just give us an S minus C to simplify things. The R value is the discount rate as usual. Next, we'll talk about PVC CATS. The formula is extremely long, so we can break it down into more manageable parts, which we'll arbitrarily call A and B. In part A, we've got I for the initial outlay, D for the depreciation rate, often called the CCA rate, and R for the discount rate. In part B, SN represents the salvage value and N represents the periods, usually given in years. From the way the equation is structured, if the problem has a salvage value of zero, all of part B becomes zero, and we need only calculate part A. Next, let's talk about PV Delta NWC. Figuring out networking capital, NWC, in problems can be tricky because it often involves reading and understanding what's happening to the money. The important thing to remember is that if accepting the project means the company gains networking capital for the duration of the project, our NWC value will be positive. On the other hand, if the company has to use networking capital for the duration of the project, our NWC value will be negative. If there are no changes to the NWC, or the problem doesn't mention NWC at all, we completely skip this part and assume the value is zero. If this isn't clear, don't worry, we'll explore it in a problem later. Finally, let's talk about PVNCS. Again, S sub N is the salvage value, R is the discount rate, and N is the number of periods. If the problem states that the salvage value is zero, then this entire equation also becomes zero, and like part B from the PVC CATS equation, we can ignore it entirely. So let's explore how to solve an NPV problem by breaking it down into what I like to view as a six-step process. Step one is writing down all the variables. Steps two through to five are finding each of the present values, so PVOCF, PVC CATS, PV Delta NWC, and PVNCS. And finally, the last step is adding it all together. We have two flavors of problems that we usually get. The first is cost-cutting proposals, which center around evaluating whether the cost savings realized from upgrading a particular piece of equipment or facility justify the expense. In sum, the problem is about whether to buy an asset or not. Let's solve this one first. M&H Co. is considering purchasing a $150,000 robotic arm to sort cargo at its warehouse. It is in class 10 with a CCA rate of 30% and has a life of 4 years, at which point it will be worth $15,000. The robot stands to save M&H Co. $30,000 pre-tax and operational costs. The relevant rate is 40%. 
The robot allows m and Co. to free up $25,000 in working capital. What is the NPV at 14%? So as you can see, uh, the screen has been divided into six separate sections, each section corresponding with one of the steps that uh, were listed in the procedure earlier. So the first section requires us to list our variables, and most of them are quite straightforward. Uh, the only one that might be slightly confusing is why is the $30,000 in pre-tax savings uh, count as S minus C. Now the reason for that is because uh, this project is a cost cutting proposal. So any savings that we make from cost cuttings would be almost like earnings from the project in a sense. So that's why the 30,000 goes here. Now the rest of the problem is actually quite straightforward since we've got our list to go off of already. Uh, it's just a matter of plugging in the right values in the right places and solving according to bed mass. So for example, we'll solve for PVOCF here. So S minus C is 30,000 times 1 minus TC, which is 0.4, uh, and times 1 minus 1 over 1.14 raised to 4 divided by 0.14. If we do the math properly, we should get 52,446 dollars and 82 cents. Alternatively, if we don't want to do this by hand, we can do this on a calculator. So this uh, is intended to represent the Casio FX 9860 screen or something similar uh, where you would enter in the values as shown. So for example, for N, you would just enter in the periods and for the I percent, you would enter in the, the discount rate. Um, and for payment, you would enter in S minus C times one minus TC. Um, now onto PVC cats. Uh, exactly the same, uh, just plug in your variables into the formula. Uh, so for part A, we should get $38,397.13. For part B, we should get $2,422.15. And subtracting them out uh, for A minus B, uh, PVC cats should be 35974900 uh, that's a bit cramped, I apologize, um, but we'll we'll write it back down on the bottom over here once we get to it. Uh, similar thing for PV uh, Delta NWC, um, the value that we should get is 10,197.99 if we've plugged everything in correctly and done the math properly. And again, same process for uh, net capital salvage, just plug and play. So 8,881.99. To zero should be our final value. So now that we have all of our values to calculate NPV, all we do is plug them into the uh, overarching equation. So negative I, uh, so we just look to section one, see that I is $150,000. Uh, PVOCF, look to section two, 52,446.82. Look to section three for PVC cats, 35,000. 974.98 and for PV Delta NWC uh, we get 10,197.99 and finally 8,881.20 and adding them all up we should get negative $42,499.10 Again, the NPV rule is that if it's positive, we accept, and if it's negative, we reject. So in this case, it's negative, therefore we reject the project. Gastro Truck Food Co. is considering replacing its only food truck. The new truck is predicted to be able to cover a wider area and increase the volume of business. It costs $200,000 and has a useful life of 15 years, at which time it could be sold for $19,000. The truck currently being used was purchased for $143,000 five years ago and can be sold now for $45,000. In 15 years, it can be scrapped for $4,000. The new truck would increase operating income by $47,000 annually, and it belongs to class 10 for CCA with a rate of 30%. Gastro truck requires a 17% return on replacement assets, and the corporate tax rate is 43.5%. Should Gastro truck replace their food truck? And we return again to the six section screen, um, and I've entered in all the variables that I thought, again, were fairly obvious. However, there are two that are not so obvious. Now, the first one is initial outlay. 
what value do we use? Do we use the, the price of the new food truck? Do we use the price of the old food truck? What do we do? Um, well, actually, uh, think about it this way. We're replacing the asset. So that means that logically what's going to happen is we're going to sell the old food truck and we're going to buy the new food truck. So what we would want is the difference between the cost of the new food truck and the market value of the old food truck. So that would be 200,000, which is the cost of the new food truck, minus 45,000, which is the market value of the old food truck currently, and that should give us $155,000. And for the S sub N value, or salvage value, we subtract 19 from, or 4 from 19,000, and we should get 15,000 as our value. So uh, that's settled. Now all that's left to do is just plug in our values as we did before. So PVOCF should come up to 141,383.79. And for part A, for PVC cats, we should get $39,910.60. Uh, for part B, we should get $2,222.60. And that should... Uh, that should subtract out to 37,688 dollars. And for PV and WC, we should have zero because it's not mentioned in the problem, so we just assume it's, it's zero and we move on to the final step where we should get 1,423 dollars and 32 cents for the present value of net capital salvage. And again, we add those values in. So 155,000 for our negative I. PVOCF is 141383.79. PVC CATS is 37,688. And our PVNCS, or sorry, our PV Delta NWC is zero. And our PVNCS is 1423.79. And adding those all up, we should get an NPV of positive $25,495.11. And so since it's positive, we accept the project. That brings us to the end of the video. Still confused? Rewind to the relevant part of the video by clicking on the sections listed to the left. For more, be sure to take a look at the tip sheets uploaded to the Academic Success Center website by following the link in the description. Need a more face-to-face -face approach? Check out tutoring hours at the Ryerson University Academic Success Center's website.